Morning, friends and neighbors. We are on the homestead today. And uh, we really need some type of storage shed up here. And we've looked at conventional sheds. We've looked at building it ourselves, And money's always precious on the homestead. <laughs> Uh, particularly when you're planning and you got to have infrastructure like tanks and roadways and stuff like that. But we got to have some up here to store our tools in besides our camper. And let me take you, show you what we got planned. So, what we're going to do, we're going to build an unconventional shed. We have a ton of those cedars out here. And Navajos for hundreds of years, thousands of years most likely, have been building hogans. So we're going to build a round log structure. Now it's not going to be a conventional hogan. We are going to put a square roof on it um, because we want to catch all the rainwater we can. But we're going to build a round log structure made out of cedar logs. Now this is just for storage. We'll probably come back later and put a concrete floor in it but we're going to get started today don't know how far we're going to get um but we're going to get after it here so when you build in a circle your logs can be shorter we don't have very long logs we have short pieces of logs and we can build in a circle we're going to try for eight uh eight feet uh on our logs but if we don't have that we'll do we'll do shorter uh, it may end up with nine sides or ten sides. It just really depends upon how we how we can gather logs and the length of logs that we can gather as we go up. So hang with us today. We're going to get this started, and then every day that we can come down, we're going to build it on up. going to try to get it up to about seven feet and then put a roof on it. So hang with us. I don't know how well you can see it or not. We laid it out. We've got a 16-foot circle and we laid it out and it's exactly five feet intervals so we were wanting to do a three foot door but we figure right here is going to be our our entryway in between these two here and we'll just make a split door like a barn door we drove these stakes to keep our circumference the way we want it and the logs are going to go on the outside of it so our interior here in uh, the county that we're in you're allowed to build uh any shed that is equals 200 square feet a 10 by 20 12 by 16 as long as you keep it under 200 square feet so we're going to build this storage shed and it's uh i did the math i had to had to go back and pull out my freshman year of high school math here and uh we've got it down to where it's it's right at 200 square feet so we're going to take and start finding some logs and we're going to dig down and we're going to bury these the bottom log in the ground a little bit and then we're going to do what's called a butt and pass and i'll show you a little bit more about that but we've got to find some logs now that will work they're going to have to be about five foot oh six foot a little bit past that about six foot eight or so so we're going to go scout for some logs some of these dead logs around here and we're going to bring some back and and get them get the first layer down anyway we ain't been back in here since we brought the camper down we came down here but we forgot the key so hopefully the mice and the pack rats haven't taken over it's dusty but it don't smell like mice it just smells like an old camper haven't had no leaks. I'm gonna put out a little bit of. I'm gonna put out a little bit of uh, rat poison. Just keep these old pack rats out of here. Hopefully. <laughs>
kind of save the log. There's the camper for privacy, but this is almost too far. I need a four-wheeler or a, my horse. Old Spurs with Drake is up there. All right, folks, our battery died. We cut one log. That was the same battery that we had that we used back at the RV park. I don't know if you can see that stake or not. This sun is really bright out here. This is where we're gonna put our house and we decided on a 24 by 36. And it goes from here over to that stake there, right there. And then I'll walk over here where we took the battery over to our neighbor, Mike. He keeps track on our place when we're not here and uh, he's a pretty good neighbor. So then we're 36 foot long this way and just on the other side of Yucca Plant, I don't know if you can see it or not, there is a post right over there, uh, a stake. So this is where our house is gonna set. We probably are gonna move it a little bit farther this way. We're gonna take this tree out right here. We'll dig it out with a we're gonna get a track hoe up here so we can kind of flatten this area out we're gonna take and have a circle drive you see the yellow that's my tape measure I killed it a 25 foot tape will not measure 25 feet they do about 20 you pull them out 25 feet they're toast so we're gonna have a circle drive over here around and go back around that way back out to our driveway so this is where our house is gonna sit like I say we may move it a little bit over but this is gonna be our view and you can see the mountains over there but there today there's a I think there's a fire towards Prescott so you can't see the mountains as good our outdoor kitchen is gonna sit on this bank and there is some water that runs down through there we're probably gonna build the outdoor kitchen on stilts, but we're gonna to try to connect it with a with a sidewalk, with a boardwalk. But that's our plans. And uh, we're working on that, on that tool shed and battery died. So we come up here and we wanted to lay this out so we could get a better look at it. Getting things visually in your head, it does motivate you. When you're just thinking, 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 but when you can see it and start to have it come together, it, it really motivates you. So this is gonna be our our view out the front door and it's gonna be a nice little area here so we're gonna go see if our battery's charged eat us a little something and then we're gonna get back to cutting a few trees down or cutting a few trees up for our uh, our little tool shed so this building's gonna be really organic because nothing none of our logs that we have are fit to form or, or anything and you know Navajo's been building Hokons like this for years they just dig a little bit stick stick a cedar log in the ground and then they stack it up cover it in dirt so it's good it's gonna be kind of like that but where we can we've got this log cut at an angle up against this log here where we can we're gonna put ollies in here and I'm hoping my hammer drill will put this ollie through here it's like that now our next log that comes in we're going to run it over top of this one so we may have to take it chink it we're, we're definitely going to have to chink some of it with with concrete and lathing material um some metal lathing material stainless lathing material but that's the way we're going to do it all the way up this is butting up against this one the next one's going to pass this one's going to butt then this one's going to come up butt pass butt pass butt pass
All right, friends and neighbors, it's going to come a storm here a little bit. We've already had a little bit of rain, and this is as much as what we got done. I really wanted to get this area closed in over here. This is our doorway, and we made it eight feet tall on purpose. We want to go up. We want to have a high roof, hang stuff in top. I, I hate a short-roofed building. We may do seven feet, but I want it high enough if we need to hang something in the rafters or hang a saddle from the rafters. We're not right on the ground. This one here is not joined up yet. All of these butts are joined up. And I know what some people are going to say. You know, this stuff ain't treated. It's going to rot. Well, this old cedar, you see it's got some rot on it. It's probably been down for 50 years, at least 25, and it ain't rotted yet. Like I said, traditionally, you know, any desert-dwelling people, Navajos, Hopi, this is kind of what they use. And I've helped build a few over the years. And no, I didn't level it out. Um, it's a really organic building. When you're dealing with stuff that's odd-shaped and weird-shaped, there's really no sense in leveling anything out. We're going to come back in here and level it out after we get the walls up and backfill with gravel uh, a little at a time and possibly put some concrete in. But as we go up, I'll show you some, some places here. Right here, once we get this cut, we'll run a post, uh, another log up and around here, see? And it's gonna be all organic, so it'll lay in there. And like I said, all the cracks, we'll fill them in with concrete and lather material. It's all you can do with the, with the wood that you have. Get another shot of the the doorway here. My beautiful wife over there organizing the back of the car. But as you can see, we've got our doorway back up here where you can really see it. And then it's just gonna be a circle. And because it's a circle, we can use any length of a log we really want. You can see right here we went right past and that gives us room to bring another one on out. So it doesn't really matter how long they are. We can use any length we want. It's right up here above the camper. Camper's right down there. We're gonna use this for a tool shed, store saddles, stuff that really doesn't have to be, it just has to be in the dry. It really doesn't have to be uh, totally out of the weather. So tools, first one thing or another. So this is what we're doing. Every time we come down here, we're gonna add a little bit more to it, bring you an update and uh, like I said, there's a storm coming, so we're, even though it's cooled down, our batteries are dead, and uh, we're going to get out of here. So until next time, we'll see you down the road.